There's a blinking gun, there's one blinking thing gun. There's a blinking thing gun up there in front. Oh, there you go, he's just taking red. red. Just right he's just lost it. He's a good question. Oh, no, he's not. He's, he's, he's a hot one there. Yeah, seems to be holding about AC20. I see several of these outlined. What happened to those guys? Um. Actually, I think it's quite an amazing achievement the students have made here. So far, until this project was done by those students, there was no uh, possible way of having a large swarm in a laboratory without massive funding behind it. Now it's possible for very reasonable amounts of money, not out of the normal range of a computer science funded project, to actually have a swarm of several hundred robots in the laboratory available. Do some steel, I think you can have the more consistent shapes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it may take green. Oh, there's one yeah. off, one off. Yeah. I can put that. So just hold them in the close proximity. The key innovation here is that all of the uh, electronics is, and mechanics is very tightly integrated onto one circuit board. Uh, on the back, we've got uh, a battery in the middle um, that's rechargeable and two tiny motors from uh, mobile phones, the same that make your mobile phone vibrate. Um, there's a little light sensor here for detecting food. And on the other side, we have the uh, main computer in the middle. That's a, called a microcontroller. And then three infrared LEDs, they're the white squares, there for uh, talking to other robots. And these three black things are infrared receivers for uh, receiving data from other robots. So we've got um, two motors on the back. These are straight from mobile phones, they're the motors that make your mobile phone vibrate. Uh, there's a little lithium battery, uh, that's that silver one there, and there's a, a light sensor there for detecting food, uh, which is in the arena sometimes. Uh, and on the other side we have uh, a sort of central computer, it's called a microcontroller, uh, which runs the software, uh, three infrared transmitters for talking to other robots, and three infrared uh, receivers for hearing what other robots have to say. Often robots are used to send them into harsh environments and then it is natural that those robots might suffer some damage and might not be functional anymore. If we send instead of one very expensive large robot a, a large number of small robots in that collaborate to achieve a task, then if there is a fault in one of the robots it will not stop the entire uh, task to be done eventually. I mean, uh, what we see is a variety in, in the biological world is based on actually a small number of building blocks. Only a few of the chemical components of the periodic systems are used and they are combined in different ways to get a what, fantastic variety of colors, of shapes, of forms, of functionality. And we would like to have a similar principle where we have uniform components from which very different objects can self-assemble with different functionalities. Uh, so you've got one which is on the far end.